And here we are yet again. I'm the last girl on the face of this planet to try from Beauty of Joseon. This is their Relief Sun Rice Plus Probiotics SPF 50 Plus PA 4 Pluses. And because of that, you guys deserve a whole, well, not whole, but a pretty full Beauty of Joseon review. So I have six products here for you guys that I've been testing, trying. Can I get the words out of my mouth? that I've been testing and trying, and I thought you guys would like to know what I came up with. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So like I just mentioned, the beauty of Joseon SPF. Everyone else was all over this last summer, and I was kind of wrapped up in my Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. I've talked to you about it a million times. These two were kind of like neck and neck for everyone's favorites, but because I had tried out like three others, I want to say, during the summer, there just wasn't room for her. So I did make room not too long ago. I'm not, I'm, I guess I'm probably about a third of the way through it, and let's just put it out there. Shocker, she loves it. But that, of course, didn't stop me from picking up these other five items, so let's just get at it. Oh, and if you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Jennifer. I'm into all things hair, skin, and makeup. And if you are too, let's face it, you landed here. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button because you know you're going to come back for more. And if you're new here, I'm always playing with my hair because it makes me crazy most times. Apologies. I have not put anything on my hands today. They are dry and crusty because I want you guys to see how all of these products worked. So here is the sunscreen. You can see it is nice and creamy, but it does have that like lightweight lotion feel. It goes right into the skin. And here's the funny thing. I had seen so many reviews over the summer about how if you like think that the isn't tree was a glowy sunscreen, this was even glowier. So part of me was like, mm, I don't need any glowier than that because for me, that was just the perfect amount of glow. It was a little more than natural glow, but it wasn't greasy. And I thought, is this going to be like that? Well, it's not. As a matter of fact, I actually find this to be less glowy than the Isn't Tree. Once this dries down, and we're not dried down yet, but it just becomes like a nice, very natural glow. You don't look shiny. You don't look greasy. You don't even feel shiny or greasy. It's like many other wonderful Asian sunscreens where it just... It, it like sinks into your skin. It's more of a lotion. It's not this SPF that we think of here in the United States that's like thick and pasty and you can feel it on your face all day. This is not that at all. It doesn't pill on top of your other skincare and I wear a ton of skincare and I haven't had any pilling, which has been very nice. Additionally, I don't think it's that pricey and on Amazon, they actually sell two packs, which I'm like, yes, I like it that much. As you can tell, it's not very big. I can't even tell you, does it say in here? Yes, it's 50 mLs, which is 1.69 ounces, which you know is like the standard size of our moisturizers. So getting two of these, will hold you for a couple months, maybe three or four, depending on how often you use it. Of course, for me, it'll last longer because I have too many sunscreens, but I like this so much. Now, can you tell, like, here's my dry, crusty hand. Here's the one that's had the sunscreen on it for two minutes. It's dried down nicely. I can barely feel it. There's no, like, sheen, really. It's just this nice, lovely glow. And since it does have rice in it, it's going to be moisturizing for your skin. It has probiotics, so it's going to hopefully feed your skin barrier and keep it nice and strong and healthy. I've been enjoying the crap out of this. And those of you who have been paying attention to my other skincare videos, you know I had also picked up this ginseng essence water. Now, I told you before, if you've been paying attention, it does not compare at all to the ginseng water from Gothamista, the Saro de Rue essence. They are both ginseng waters, but that one is made completely differently. That's why it's so much more expensive than this. But this is really nice. And you know I like to do several hydration steps. And because it has ginseng in here, it's great as an antioxidant. It's coveted in Asian skincare. It has been for thousands of years. And of course, I want to have antioxidant um, properties because really what we want the antioxidants to do is get in there and just like eat up all the free radical damage that could be happening that will then show up on the surface of our skin. So using, for me, I like all the antioxidants. I try to get as many as I can. So just using this as a hydration step that I know is going to have a little more benefits for me, love it. And not to mention it's not sticky. It dries down very nicely. It layers really beautifully with my other products. I mean, I can't say enough good stuff about this, but it's not the same as the Saro de Rue. But would you expect it to be? I mean, that's a huge price difference. All right, let's talk about something I don't love. This is their Radiance Cleansing Balm. Cleansing bombs are cleansing bombs to a certain degree. There's a couple things I don't like about this. So it opens up nicely. It has the little scooper, which I love. And there's like this little plastic divider. So the scooper isn't laying in there. 
great. However, that little plastic divider is actually, it's not in here. It's actually in this part, which is weird. I tried putting this back on, screwing this on here, thinking, well, maybe this sits on here, and then this goes in here, but it doesn't close when you do that. So it's just not a well thought out packaging, which is annoying. So you have to take it apart every time and whatever. You can tell I've only used it like three times. So as far as cleansing bombs goes, think of this like on your like thicker range. It is not as like, you know how when you dip right into the pharmacy one, it immediately just like sinks in there, glides in there. This is a little firmer. It's more like if you were going into butter or even like it reminds me of Crisco. And it of course does melt down. You just have to rub it between your fingers, but you do get those little pieces that don't melt down initially. So you do really got to work it, work it, work it, which is fine. It actually reminds me a lot of the one from Pyong Kang Yule, which isn't surprising. I mean, there's only, you know, so many different labs that make different products there and it's not uncommon for there to be overlapping. So, is it nice? Yeah, it's fine. It works. It didn't sting. It took off my makeup. It worked really well. Am I going to buy it again? I'm not going to. I have I have my Holy Grails. I have another one that I'm testing out that you might know about. And kind of, well, I'll let you know about that one later. But do I have any need for this one? I don't. I will, I will absolutely use it up. I'm not going to not use it. That's just wasteful. I do, however, just hate the way this whole thing goes together. I just think that it is cumbersome and not really well thought out. Ooh, three down, three to go. All right, now let's talk about the much talked about. This is their Dynasty Cream. It's one of like their marquee items in their whole line. It is a light gel-like cream moisturizer. I, it's nice. I, I love gel cream moisturizers, but not for this time of year. I need something thicker and more occlusive. I'm sure I will absolutely love this in the summertime. I put way too much on there. I put enough on there for my face and neck. It feels really nice. As a matter of fact, I've been using it over top of the Cosarex Snail Mucin, which they work really nicely together, but it's just not enough for me in the wintertime. If you have oily to combo skin and you don't like wearing a thicker, heavier moisturizer, I think you might like this very much. And because it goes so far, I've been using this for over a month, either morning or night. If I use it at night, I do put like something thicker over top of it because I do like it. I think it's very nice. But for me, this time of year, it's not the right one. You can see it does leave a nice glow behind. It doesn't leave you looking flat and matte. It does feel a little bit tacky, and that's one of the other reasons I don't like it so much for in the evening. I don't want my face to like feel like it's sticking to my pillow, so which isn't a huge deal. I mean, I do like to use face oils, which go over top of this so nicely. So depending on what your routine is like, I mean, if you are a person like me who is like layer after layer after layer after layer, then you might like this. I mean, like I said, with a face oil over top, so nice. If you're combo oily, so nice. If you're normal to dry, not for in the winter. So I actually think I'm going to stop testing it out for a while. I've used it plenty. I'm going to put her to the back of the cabinet and bring her out again in the summertime to see how I like it in that more humid weather. All right, I'm going to save the best for last. So second last, we have the Glow Deep Serum. This is Rice plus Alpha Arbutin. Like I mentioned before, rice is moisturizing. And Alpha Arbutin, I've mentioned to you before, it is great for like targeting any sort of like pigment. It's actually a tyrosinase inhibitor. I know, big word. Basically that tells your melanocytes, stop, you're not going to make any melanin. You're just going to stay and leave the surface of her skin nice and clear. I mean, it's not nice and clear, but it definitely helps. As a matter of fact, alpha arbutin is best friends with azelaic acid, and I've used the two in conjunction from many different brands. I've used The Ordinary, I've used Naturium, I've used from Beauty of Joseon. It's a perfect pairing, so no matter what brand you use, and if you if you have like a lot of like like hyperpigmentation or melasma, the two work really well together. I mean, it's not going to completely eradicate if you have like really deep, dark splotches. You may need to have a laser for that. But for me, I've been using them over time and it's made a huge difference. So of course, I knew I was going to like this and I do. It's a nice consistency. You can see it has a nice like viscosity to it. It spreads really nicely, sinks in nicely. And once it I don't want to say dries down, but once I get it to where I want it to be, 
Then I go on top with my azelaic acid and they've been working so nicely together. I of course use the azelaic acid from Naturium. So mixing brands isn't a big deal. And that's one of the things I love about using Korean skincare. For some reason, usually the ingredient list is basic enough that it doesn't interact poorly when you use brands from other regions. At least that's been my experience. So if you need to add a little extra moisturizing and you wanna help with any sort of brown spots you might have on your skin, you might wanna give this a shot. All right, the last up was a complete surprise to me because I didn't know this existed. This is the Revive Eye Serum Ginseng Plus Retinol, A-L. Most of you know my absolute obsession with retinoids. As a matter of fact, retinal or retinaldehyde has been my vitamin A slash retinol retinoid of choice for, I want to say, about a year now. And because I've been using retinol products for many years, my doctor told me when I first started out that I could use the different gel. I could actually take it up to my orbital bone, and I did. And because that was so mild, I was able to, well, kind of like keep any sort of wrinkles at bay, but I never like went that high with my tretinoin. And once I started using other retinols, I would keep them just like a little bit below that area, but I would always take it up to like around here to kind of, if crow's feet were gonna happen, kind of like be ready. And then once I started using retinaldehydes and they were so gentle, at least for my skin, I started taking them kind of close, like to about here and bringing them up to the top of my orbital bone. And what happens is even though it's only here, the product is only here, it actually migrates once it's in your skin and kind of moves a little bit. So I didn't need to take it up high for there to be effective results up here. And then when I came across this eye serum, I was, I was thrilled because it was made for the eye area. It was a retinaldehyde. As a matter of fact, it is called a retinol liposome 2%. And I was trying to figure out what the liposome part was. The best I can like figure from all the research I was doing is basically they break the retinol down into tiny small pieces and then it's encapsulated. So it is gentle but it keeps it stabilized. So it's not going to really irritate your eyes, at least it shouldn't at all, but it's going to be effective. Now I've been using this for mm, three weeks maybe, and I love it. It is so light, it is so creamy, it sits so nicely on my eyes. I haven't had any irritation whatsoever. And because she's a little bit extra, when I use this in the evening, I do go over the top with another like thicker eye cream, I guess. It's the one from Kiehl's. I mentioned it briefly to you guys. I'll be talking to you about it in an upcoming video. But in the meantime, this, if you are trying to address any wrinkles under the eyes or even keep them from starting, I think you would love this. It feels light, it feels hydrating, it feels moisturizing. I don't think I would recommend for you to use it during the day, just like any other sort of retinol product, it's best to use in the evening. You don't wanna risk any sort of issues with the sun, but you should be using your sunscreen. Now, all of these products I did get on Amazon. I will, of course, have links for everything below. But as far as I'm concerned, I have, well, four favorites. She's a second place run up because we'll see how it really works in the summertime. And the cleansing balm, mm, no thanks. All right, so even though I was the last one to get on the Beauty of Joseon sun relief train, I'm on the train. I'm probably just in the nick of time. Korean sunscreen has this way of like every season coming out with a new version. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the new versions are this year but I'm definitely gonna finish this up. It doesn't mean I'm not gonna use my Isntree because I friggin' love that stuff. And I gotta say, price-wise, I really do think that this is a really competitively priced brand. I really didn't feel like I was breaking the bank on anything I purchased, and I really felt everything, except for the cleansing balm, worked better than I expected, honestly. So if you're new to Korean skincare, or you just wanna add some more into your routine, I really don't think you can go wrong with any of these. And don't forget, when you're making skincare purchases on Amazon, make sure that you see under like the description, it'll have highlighted a hyperlink. It says, visit the Beauty of Joseon store. That's a big deal because skincare is so counterfeited and sold on Amazon. You need to be able to find that little store to go to that store because otherwise you might be buying something that's counterfeit and wasting your money and perhaps doing damage to your skin. But of course, all of the Amazon links that I have for you guys are through the Beauty of Joseon store. And for those of you who've been shopping using my links, thank you so much. It, every little bit helps, even though they're tiny little commissions, they add up and they help me support my channel. So thank you so much. 
All right, you guys, as always, I want to thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you real soon. Mwah.